Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are fortunate enough to be here for our August 2018 Tabs 3 Virtual User Group Meeting, which is at an odd time this month because I'm going on vacation next week. Did I say I'm going on vacation? Mary Jo, have I mentioned that I'm going on vacation next week? I'm very excited because I'm going on vacation next week. And then Mary Jo and I are flying to Atlanta to put in World Docs. So the rest of the month is kind of shot. So here we are on the first Monday of the month as opposed to the last Monday of the month. And today we are talking about the new interface in version 19. Um, I will say right now that we have put the pre-release copy of version 19 in a bunch of firms. And everyone that we pegged as someone that we thought would not like the new interface loved it. So I would have to say that the new interface is a roaring success, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Mary Jo and I are going to take turns pointing out all the different things that are new in the new interface. And so without further ado, I am going to press the series of buttons, of magic buttons, that will get me to this screen here where we are going to start talking about the new interface. Mary Jo? So yeah, this is like what it looks like here with our new uh, version 19 release. So we have a lot of things going on here that we're going to break apart into different sections. So we've got our quick launch over here on the left. We've got some tabs. We've got some my actions and all actions and some different icons. And we're going to break all this up into small sections. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the actual theme settings. So the theme settings, when you first install version 19, give you an option to go ahead and embrace this new theme. Just go ahead and jump in with two feet and say, yes, I want the new uh, standard theme that they have. Or if you say no, it will give you the old fashioned theme with the task folders and all of that. So where does that live? Sometimes we have some people that have installed it or the update is run and it's asked a user and they didn't know they were supposed to say yes to this new theme and they have the classic instead of this new look. So what you can do is you want to make sure that up underneath the view on the toolbar that you can go to theme settings and we've got all kinds of things that we can control right here. So we can set it to the standard theme, which is the new theme that we see out here, or you can set it to the classic theme. So if they've accidentally set it to the classic theme, you simply come in here and then set to standard theme. If you want to do pieces and parts of what we have here, you can check different boxes. So we can do a combination of the old and the new, or you can just do the complete standard theme. So here on this screen, we've got our navigation part. We've got our quick launch, whether or not you want that quick launch on there or not. So you can actually just take just that off and just have the home page. And this is user by user, by the way. So each user can set their own settings on what they want to see. But a lot of firms are being standardized across the board saying, you know, everybody's going to take this, this new look or this, this particular view. So that's personal choice on the firm's part. But each user has their own controls. You can decide whether you want to show the home page or whether you want to go back to the task folders. You can also decide whether or not you want that application toolbar to show, which is down here. Different things here that you can have uh, that you can pick and choose. Now, I would suggest you can come in and you can play with this. Now, I've just unchecked you know, two things and went back to this. And if I say OK, um, I'm not going to do this across all settings. They're all things. But now we get that old view back. You can see what we have. We've got the toolbar on the, on the right. We've got this look over here with the task folders. It's going back to that old style. Yeah, there's a couple of new things. But you still have the, um, the task folder thing, but mm -hmm. you can switch entirely back to the old way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I just did a couple of things. So here, now I'm going to put that back and take these off. Now, maybe I want the quick launch in the home page, but I also want the task folders. You can do that as well. And so now I've got my task folders here. And as long as I don't close this little box here, I can still keep that task folder view that I'm used to seeing. But I also still have my new view with the home and the launch and all that. So there's these ways you can kind of put things uh, together. Now, if I close the task folders, I'd have to go back up to my view and I have to come back in and I'd have to make sure I have it checked again. Um, you've also got the interface down here in the center. So we've got the tabbed interface, which we're going to talk more about here in just a moment, where we have tabs across the top. 
or we've got the windowed interfaces, which is back in that classic view again. So if I go back to the windowed, each thing has its own window rather than a little tab. I can just click back and forth between. And again, we'll go into tabs more detail in just a few minutes. But that's where you can control these theme settings. And if somebody, again, accidentally goes in and they do the update and they don't say yes to get the new standard theme, and they've got that classic, they're going to know right away, wait, nothing's changed. I don't have that view that you know Susie down the hall has or whatever. You can come in and you can help them fix that. Or if they decide, hey, hey, hey I'm not sure about this, and then a week mm -hmm. later everybody else is raving about it, mm -hmm. you can switch back and forth all you want. It's not going not to yep. affect on it. And combine anything that you want as well. Right. Now we do have a question so far, so let's let's take questions for just a minute about this uh, the, the theme settings. Patty, what do we got? Um, Meredith would like to know if you can take the theme setting away from a user so they cannot change the theme. I will check on that and see if that's something that they can do um, and lock out of. Um, it would probably be under our access profiles if we have that ability. But I can, I'll check that and see. I'll make a note and we'll get an answer to her. Yep, I believe, I believe that you can, but Mary Jo is going to check. And um, we will, at the very least, email Meredith and let her know um, mm -hmm. if we don't find it before the end here. Now I'm going to talk about the Quick Launch toolbar, so or the Quick Launch pane over here. And uh, Mary Jo mentioned, oh my goodness, we've got an, a fatal error. <laughs> <laughs> We're in sample data, so yeah, you never know what we're going to get. a little odd. Okay. I don't see them. Yep, there we yeah, go. Yeah, there. Okay. Go back in and see. Well, now you get to see the new uh, splash screen. And there it was. Did everybody see that? Mm -hmm. um, so back to being logged in. And you now we're back to the original theme. So I'm going to take yeah, it back to the uh, theme settings and standard theme. And OK, there we go. Just a second, doesn't matter. Now, this over here on the left is our quick launch pane. It can be unpinned just like quick clicks can. So it can actually live and hide under this tab. And it will only show itself when you click on the tab. And then when you click someplace else, it'll go away. Or it can be pinned open, which is my personal preference. It doesn't take that much space. And it can be readjusted so that it, it uh, uh, if I can grab this, there we go, so that you can move that over and make it smaller or make it bigger. And of course, you can do that anytime you want. So you can do that in the middle of things. Um, what you'll notice is when you first come in here, all the things that you had on your main tab in your uh, task folders, which I'm not getting back because I don't have them turned on. But all the things that you had in your main tab, which was configurable in the old version 18 and prior uh, versions of the software, will now show up under pinned actions. Uh, you may notice that we uh, have more room here. So unlike the main folder from the older versions, where you only had, I believe, 12 spots that you could put things in, we now have really unlimited. And you can actually fold up pinned actions and see what's underneath and then expand them again. So a, a lot of, of you know, a lot of uh, functionality there that uh, a lot of usability that, that, that this brings to the table in being able to pin a lot of different things here as opposed to just pinning those 12 things or just creating icons for those 12 things that you use most often. Another thing that you'll notice is that we have uh, search. So if I want to find a transaction file list, and I start to type trans, and it will pop up and suggest that perhaps one of the things I might be looking for is transaction file list. So for me, this is huge. Gone are the days of searching through these menus or searching through the folders in the old task folders to try and remember where the thing is that you're looking for. Now, if you just type what you're looking for, and they have even made it so that you can type things that may not be part of what you're looking for. For us, we always refer to a transaction file list as a TFL. And apparently, a lot of other people did, because you can simply type TFL here, and it will find your transaction file list. So I click that. It opens up, and I'm ready to go. 
And one thing that you'll notice then, well, it actually happens to be here, but if this were something, if transaction file list were something that wasn't in my pinned actions, it would show up down here under recent actions. The reason it didn't is because it's already been pinned up top. All right, so oh, I just had it right there. Now, you'll notice then that under recent actions, which can also be collapsed and reopened so that it doesn't take up real estate when you don't want it to, one of the other things that you can do with recent actions then is pin it. So I obviously, five, the fifth last thing that I did was email statements. Uh, I did not pin it at that point, so I still have the ability to pin it. And now it's up here and it's going to stay up there until I unpin it and it'll go back down to recent if appropriate or it'll just disappear and I'll have to wait until I use it again to pin it. So pinned actions, always going to stay there. Recent actions is a rolling list of the five most recent things you've done. And actually, Mary Jo does it go. Oh, it goes, goes beyond that. Okay. So as you start to use things, your recent actions are going to fill up. And those things that you say, oh, I'd like to use those more often, uh, and I don't want to search for them or look under recent actions, you can pin them. Then if you, you'll find that if you don't like the placement of email statements, maybe you want it to be right up at the top, you can just grab it and move it or move it down. And you have complete control over where those things go. Now, finally, if I decide, well, I don't want that anymore, then now email statements is, is at the top of my recent actions because I just moved it from pinned uh, because I unpinned it. So you have pinned actions, you have recent actions which can then be pinned, you have, once you've taken something up and pinned it, you can unpin it, it goes back down to recent actions. And if you say, well, I don't even want to see email statements on my recent actions anymore, you can delete them from your recent actions. Another thing that you can do under here is look at pinned matters and recent matters. Just like we have pinned actions and recent actions, we have pinned matters and recent matters. So um, one of the things that I've done recently is access Michael Larson's ADA employment issue. I can either delete that from my recent matters or pin it and now it's up here under pin headers. So a lot of functionality going on here, and you have the ability to collapse these things, and you have a, the ability to collapse the entire quick launch by unpinning it. And finally, if you happen to close your home, which we're gonna look at in just a minute, you have a quick and easy way to get back home. So that's that. Next thing up is our tabbed interface, Mary Jo. There we go. I was muted. <laughs> uh, if you look across the top here, as Paul was opening things in these pinned actions or whatever, um, so let's say that I was entering fees and I open the fee window, it goes ahead and puts a, a new tab over here. So I still can go flip back to my home and then I can also get to my rapid fee right here. And if I leave that open and I decide I have to add some costs as well, now I've got the cost and I can flip back and forth right up here between the cost and the fee. And even I could add what, however many of these tabs that I would like. And so here's client manager. So if I'm you know, going in and editing bills, for instance, I might have client manager open and I could see that I have something in here to do, whatever I do that, and I have to go add some fees or costs. I can flip back and forth, even have pre-bill tracking up here and be looking at that. And there's all kinds of things I can have as tabs across the top that I can just flip back and forth through and, and move through the, the different items that I have to do in a day. Now, of course, Mary Jo, this was here before. It was, it was you had multiple things could be open. You but had they hid. windows. They hid, yeah, yeah exactly. And then you'd have to reduce the window down and have to click on that window to bring it back up again. And you couldn't just flip back and forth between any one of these windows and do the functions that you needed. Right. So it's nice to have it right there at your fingertips and to be able to do that. And then they took it one step further so that you can actually split the screen up. So for just a moment, I'm going to close and pin my quick launch to give us a little more room here on the screen. And if you go up to your window tab, we've got a new horizontal tab group or a new vertical tab group. I'm gonna do the vertical tab group to show you how we can split these screens side by side. So now whatever the last tab I was highlighted on is now gonna scooch over onto the right and then I have some things over here. Now, if I add a new thing at this point, 
let's say that I want to look at the recap of hours, I was last looking at this screen on the right, so it adds it to the right. If I were over here on the cost entry and want to add something, uh, as long as I'm on that side, it's going to add that to the left. And now I've got all these little tab windows that I could do a comparison side by side of two different things. Um, think about reports and things like that that you're looking at side by side right on the screen. And this is available in all of the modules. And I know that we're looking at this right now in tabs, but you can split this across the whole um, the whole uh, software. And then if you're done and you want to go ahead and close windows, as soon as I close these out, it's going to take me back to my regular one tab or one split side. It's not even split anymore. I, <laughs> that. I kind of got in the loop. It'll just take you back to a single screen. So if you want to do the horizontal, you also can split it that way. So you can have things on top of one another. And again, you can add more things. You can keep your quick launch open if you want to. It just kind of scrunches over and with this video. I don't know how small that is on your screen. But again, wherever I am, top or bottom, it's going to add those tabs that I can switch right back and forth between all of these different windows. So this really, really speeds things up. It makes things a lot easier for you to view multiple windows at one time and to flip back and forth very easily without getting caught in those windows that, you know, you start a report and then you have to go back and start the report again because, you know, or generate statements again because you have to go back and get out of the one you're in to get to run another um, another one. So. That's the tab. Somebody has a question about split screen, so we're going to take that real quick. Okay. Um, there's a couple questions, Mary Jo. First, can you show the vertical split again, how mm -hmm. to do that? Yep. So I'm just underneath the window. So the question is about the vertical split. So I go to my window um, option on my toolbar, and I go to the new vertical tab group. And when I do that, whatever's the last thing on this side is going to split over. And then I can add whatever I want to that other side just by clicking on something from my, you know, search or my pinned items or whatever I need to do there. So I've got that. And then if I want to get rid of something there, I can take it off. And when I close everything on one side or the other, it'll go back to a single screen. And there was another question. Back. There is one more. Um, does the window key plus the arrow key work to split tabs? Hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, uh, it does not take you from one tab to the next. It does not. That's a good idea, though. Paul's a keyboard person. That's I am a around. keyboard person. That's correct. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now and, I'm going to point out one more oh, thing you have about these question, tabs. Daddy? No. No. Okay. Or do you? I, I do have one that um, I'd like to ask real quick. Um, because we're talking about pinned actions. When you click a pinned or recent matter, does it go to the client manager for that file? Oh, for the for the pinned matters? Yeah. Um, I believe it does. Let's try yeah. that. It's going to actually, yeah, yeah client it manager. And it, it, um, yeah, I was going to say it goes to matter manager, but we're in the tabs virtual user group meeting, and, and, and that's mm -hmm. a practice master thing. Yeah, it goes to the client manager. Mm -hmm. Now, one other thing I want to point out is that in version 18 and prior, if we did, uh, there were certain things that we could do, and we would drill down into them, like specifying who we were going to search for, for in, a, in a conflict search, and then it would drill down into that report. And until I closed that report, I couldn't run another, I couldn't do anything else. If I'm previewing the report, I can't really, well, that's not entirely true. If, if I couldn't get back to running another conflict search, or if I drilled down in a conflict search and, and clicked on somebody and it would open up a window, that window w with that person's information or that client or that contact would be on top of everything else and I couldn't move around. I'm going to run a conflict search and, uh, and, and I can't find it, so I'm just going to type conflict. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I just want to show how easy it is when you can't find something or you don't know where to look for it to find it. And I'm going to search for Purdue, and I'm going to print the report. I guess I need to select a printer. And you see how what I've done here shows up in these tabs, and I can still go back and forth. Now, here's the real kicker. When I 
click on, um, I guess I'm thinking of a practice master thing. There are certain things where if you click on something, it'll open up another window. In older versions of the software, that window had precedence over everything else and you could not get to anything underneath until you close that window. Now, it just opens up in a new tab and I can still go back and forth. So I think that's that's huge from an, a usability standpoint. You're not locked into a window that's going to keep you from going anyplace else. Um, next thing is this home page. So I'm going to finish closing my windows here. This is my home page, and um, when you look at all actions in the home page, it is all the things that you can do in the software. It's kind of like all the different tabs that you used to have in the um, the older interface. You'd have these tabs at the top. They're kind of organized a little bit differently. They've got different groupings that we think make more sense or that STI thinks make more sense, and I tend to agree with them. Uh, but we also have this new, th and so if I click on people, I'll see things like client or contact or client manager, things that are related to people. And if I go back, now this is something called breadcrumbs. So I clicked from all actions into people. Now if I go into, is there anything in here that, no, I was gonna say, let me go back to all actions. I'm going to go to reports. I'm going to go to accounts receivable reports. Now I can go back to reports and go to client reports by following the breadcrumbs, just like you'd see in some of the other uh, web-based programs that are coming out these days is this thing called breadcrumbs. We also, of course, have a back button to get us back a level, okay? And um, I'm losing my responsiveness here. I'm wondering if I'm... Hmm. I can go. Yeah, can you click on anything? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, no. Nope. I'm wondering if I'm going to get another fatal error. I'm wondering why we're getting these, but we're not going to worry about that. It's hard telling with with sample, sample data. data. Exactly. Yeah. I'm actually going to go ahead and close this out. I'm going to go right back and sign back in as Ron. I don't know if it's a problem with my desktop or if it's a problem with something else, but we'll find out. Okay, we're back in this interface. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all actions and the ability to move around, but we now also have my actions. Now, of course, we have the quick launch over here on the left, but we also have the ability to create uh, all sorts of icons here in the my actions section. Something a little different than the quick launch, something that's a way for you to organize things. And if we go to this gear icon, we call this a gear icon, Mary Jo, I'm teasing her because <laughs> she couldn't remember what this was called. We are able to do things like go into the test group and delete different items and then maybe go back to my actions and actually delete the test group. We'll get into these groups in a second. Or maybe I want to take fee entry and put it over here. Did you see how I just grabbed that and moved it? A lot different than it was in the older interface where you had to take it off of one icon and then put it on another icon. It was a little cumbersome. Here you just grab it, move it where you want it, and it goes. If you go down to the bottom, we have the ability to add an unlimited number of actions or groups. So if I have another action that I want to add, maybe I want to add the billing frequency list, but maybe at the same time I want to add the active user list or the allocated payments report. I don't have to go in icon by icon and specify what's going here. I add actions and when I'm done, they appear at the bottom. I want this active user list up top, I move it up top. Now, I can also add a group. And when I do, I can give it a name like Paul's Reports. And I can give it a description if I want. I'm not going to because I can't think of anything exciting to say. And a color so that I can have different folders or groups that represent different things visually to me. 
right then and there you can go ahead and add some things. So I'm going to add add delete dictionary words. We'll just do that one. And be done. And now I've created Paul's reports. And when I go in there, I already have add delete dictionary words. Paul's reports could also have another group called accounts receivable reports and, and another group called client reports. So when I clicked into Paul's reports group, I would see two groups in that example, accounts receivable and, and client reports. And so you can have groups in groups in groups, kind of a neat concept. And I can also simply take something that I want in Paul's reports. If I can get down there. I have a feeling we're maybe we should have maybe we really should have updated this morning, Mary Jo. Maybe okay. there's a, a problem with this interface. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna just go ahead and uh I'm gonna go back out and I'm gonna come back in. We love technology. We do love technology. Maybe this is a good time for me to admit that I really uh, don't like computers. I try to hide that. I'm beginning to think maybe I should just I promise clean. in our live version this does not happen, but <laughs> yeah, it does not. Yeah, we were playing our, our NFR copies. We were playing with this all this morning. I know, but we were playing with it in the live uh, live software. So okay, we're gonna do that. So we're gonna go back. Here's my test. Uh, this is my old test, and so I can get back into the gear icon, and I can take this Paul's reports and perhaps grab this one and just move it down to Paul's reports and drop it in there. And I don't need to, to go in here and add an action. I can just take the reports that are already on my other tab and move them into the newly created group. So we got a lot going on here. We've got the ability to add our own groups and our own actions uh, in subgroups and subgroups and subgroups if we want. And when we're all done, we click finish and we're back to having everything set the way we want it. So that's that's my actions. Mary Jo, what else do we have? We have the font sizes. And well, we have fonts, right? yeah, and then you can't really change the font sizes. So one other thing that we have, two other things, we've got the, the, the new icons that, that look um, a little bit different, a little bit flatter, a little bit more modern. We've also got these new icons down here. And um, you want to talk about those, Mary Jo? Yeah, so the new icons are definitely a little different. They are more modern, and you're able to see that, you know, tabs and Practice Master and Trust and APGL and our system config. So they have still similar ideas. You know, tabs is still the stopwatch and Practice Master is still the folder. They just look a lot neater, and they're all a different color. So you'll know tabs is blue. You'll know that, you know, Practice Master is purple, and then we've got this teal. And then whatever module you are in will be underlined. So it makes it very easy. It always has said tabs three up here at the top. But now if you look down here, I can know immediately I'm in tab three because I've got the little underline there. If I were to click on Practice Master, and I know we're not going to go into anything in here, but if I go into Practice Master and get into the new view, because this is not the new view either, but we'll go into the standard theme settings, and I can see immediately I'm in Practice Master because it's underlined. So that's really helpful when you are in the software to know exactly where you are. These icons are now in your desktop. They're down in your toolbar when they're open. So it's really clear on how uh, and where you are. It is. Uh, the colors, I, I remember hearing uh, there was a different color for every icon and thinking, oh, well, that, that doesn't matter. But it's mm -hmm. huge. To me, the fact that the program that you're in is there and underlined, that's huge, too. Used to be that that icon just wouldn't be here because this was your way to get to the other programs. Well, having it here and having it underlined gives you a quick visual re representation of where you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the new interface. And uh, I am a big fan. I think Mary Jo's a big fan. Patty, are you a big fan of the new interface? <laughs> I am a big fan. <laughs> Do you have a question? Is that why you looked I, at me that way? I, I was looking at you funny because I have some questions. Um, it kind of goes back to the split screens again, Mary Jo. 
can you have two cost entry screens open at one time? Yes, because they're different. So if we go into our, um, let me go into open some things here. Let me get into cost and let me get into recap. So if I, I have got cost open on one, okay, over here, and now I'm on this one, I'm over on the recap, and I can go back to cost and I can open it again, and I can open it again and again. I can open as many cost entry windows as I want, or fee entry windows. And you can see they're all still different windows. I've got some on this side, some on that side, but you can open as many of any of these different things, uh, instances of these, as you want to. It's just gonna create new tabs. So I could definitely compare and have two different costs next to each other for the same client, for the same whatever. Next question, Penny. Okay. And when you're in a split screen like that, can one window be tabs and another practice master? Oh. Uh, no, they, that is different. That would be two different separate programs. So you would have you could have split screens within practice master, and you could have split screens within tabs, but they are not side by side like that unless you've got something. I know on a Mac you can kind of split your screens. I know probably there's a way to do it in well, Windows. Well, it's more a matter of having the programs both yes. on the same screen and yeah. next to each other. Yeah, they'd have to be on that same screen open next to each other like that. Um, now, I could reduce this and, you know, make it smaller over here and kind of, you know, have those duplicate screens here. And then you see I've got Practice Master behind me, and I could make that smaller and then have the two next to each other, you know, on my screen. You can resize those to do that. Uh, or they could be have Practice Master on a separate screen. If you've got multiple screens, Practice Master would be on one and tabs on another. But they, within a program, you cannot split that across two screens. Next question, Betty. Sure. Paul, are you going to tell us when we will receive an update request and when the version goes live? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> next question. The, the This version, version 19, went live for what we call new sales last Tuesday. Was it last Tuesday? Yes. Yeah. And... I think actually it was two Tuesdays ago because it was the day after our last virtual user group meeting. So it's been out there for new sales for about two weeks. That means they're about ready to look at releasing it to current users. Um, the, uh, that's, that's not a given. Um, one reason that they release it to new sales first is so that the people that are buying the software for the first time can help them discover any of the things that the people that have been using it for a long time didn't help them discover about the new release. So in, it really has a lot to do with uh, what they're discovering in this period as people buy it as a new product and install it. So I would say that sometime within the next week or so, it will start rolling slowly at first to existing users. Uh, what that means is that you know the first week, that they do this, they might notify 500 firms, let's say, that, that this is out there. And then they'll look and see what kind of a response they get and how it hits support, because the people that make Tabs 3 and Practice Master are very conscious of the support that they're able to provide. And so therefore, they don't want to overwhelm support by releasing it to too many people at one time. As they feel comfortable with the uh, burden or the, uh, the that they have the capacity and support and that they know what they're looking at as they release it uh, as to what to expect and increase support calls they'll start to roll it out a little more frequently and a little bit bigger groups so uh, ultimately what we'll probably get to is being released to a thousand uh, existing customers every week or two and so that by the end of the summer by the end of the certainly middle of the fall perhaps everybody should have it now, if you absolutely, absolutely have to have it right now, uh, which I'm, I'm hoping not everyone that's on this call says they absolutely have to have it right now because that would, that would overwhelm us. But if you do, all you need to do is send me an email, paul.purdue, and we all know it's like the school, not the chicken, P-U-R-D-U-E, paul.purdue at attorneycomputersystems.com. And uh, we will look at... Um, uh, what, what we can do to get it to you uh, pretty quickly in, in, in lieu of that role that they make of the of, uh, that planned and steady role that they make to the existing users. 
hope that answers that. If it doesn't, let me know. Patty, do we have uh, one more question? Another question? Um, actually, a couple have rolled in. Um, is there an automatic upgrade if you have a maintenance package? Uh, it, it, it's not going to be under check for updates. Um, but yeah, if you're on maintenance, you get it. Uh, it's yours, free. You don't have to worry about paying for it. You will be notified. If you're on maintenance right now and your maintenance expired, uh, expires next month and, you're, and you don't renew it, you're still entitled to it, even if they haven't told you about it yet. Um, so don't worry about that. Uh, but if you're on maintenance, it's, it's yours. It's just that uh, it's not going to show up under check for updates. Check for updates will check for the latest version of the software that you currently have. Next question. What a, yep. What about the online pay feature? Well, that's not what we're talking about today. Um, we did talk about it uh, a little bit last week. So, yeah, and we're going to go more in depth. I believe that it's slated for either next month or the month after. Yeah, actually it is. Next month topic is in the enhanced online payment. So whoever that is, Patty, if you'll let me know, I can talk to that person directly about that. That's not really what we're talking about today with the, with the theme changes. Any more questions? Um, just one more. Can you, well, two more. Can you go over how to change to standard view again? Oh, please? yeah. If you click on view and theme settings, uh, you have a whole bunch of things you can check, but you can also just say, hey, set it back to classic or, hey, set it to standard. And what you'll notice that as I do that, it checks the appropriate boxes. So if I say set the classic theme and OK, it's back. And now you're back to the same old thing that you're used to, view, theme settings, set to classic or set to standard, and then OK. It will ask if you want to uh, have those settings apply to all applications. Again, this is just user by user, but it's for the other programs. So when I say, yes, I want it to apply to all other applications, that means practice master and accounts payable and trust accounting and that stuff. Next question. How long does it take to update the software firm-wide, like after you update the server, is there a desktop install? Happens automatically. Once the server's been updated, uh, every user that logs in, uh, their, their individual machine, their individual copy of tabs will notice that there's a new version and will automatically download it. It won't let them go any further. So that's, that's, that's just a matter of, uh, uh, but once it's on the server, it gets rolled out to everybody else. Any more? Yeah, Lori has a question. Lori, you can go ahead. Lori? Bueller? Okay, well, she's not there, but then Mary is asking, can we lock out users from system tasks or remove the module from the screen? Yeah, if, if they're not allowed in, it won't show up. Just like it did before. These are just different icons, so whatever they have no access to will not show up down here. And that's on a user by user basis. And Lori is back asking, can you show the fee description where it is supposed to display more characters down below? Well, I'm, I'm afraid not because we're kind of out of time. Um, and that's, again, that's not part of what we're doing. But um, uh, if, Patty, if you'll let me know who that is, I'll email them a picture of that and we can talk more about that offline. So if you have questions that we didn't get to, Patty will make sure that I answer those. She's very mean when it comes to that stuff. I'm, I'm kind of frightened Horribly right now. Mean. I'd like yeah. to just stay on the call so that I don't have to deal with that. But anyways, if you have questions that we weren't able to answer because we didn't have time, we will get those answers to you. Uh, I will get those to you and email them to you directly. So everybody, uh, thanks for showing up. Let me just say that next month we're going to talk about online payments and how they've been enhanced in the, uh, in the uh, email statements program, and the enhancements to the multi-matter payment that now allow you to drill down to a specific invoice. Uh, more details on that next month. Real quickly, if you go to our website, which is attorneycomputersystems.com, I emphasize that last S in the word systems, uh, if you go to attorneycomputersystems.com and click on videos, you will find all of our videos, the four live events and the two 
pre-recorded Mary Jo's eBytes video series and our Paul and Mary Jo show. Click on those links or those more info buttons and you will find all sorts of information including what the next event is, what the topics are, how to register, and as you scroll down, recordings of all the previous uh, versions of those particular meetings. Uh, so everybody have a good rest of the month and uh, we will talk to you in September. Thanks much. Bye-bye.